Հապում ենք թուրքի նախբեր սու ես Good evening, welcome to Horizon Armenian Television's English news segment. I am Tatavika Kizian. Los Angeles Armenians continue to rally in the city of Los Angeles, closing the 170 freeway. And they are also in front of the CNN news building and in the city of Glendale. As they continue to rally, we'll join them a little bit later. Fighting continues along the entire Artsakh Azerbaijani line of contact with the heaviest battles taking place in the north and far south. The Azeri forces have been consistently attempting to move forward, but as a result of the decisive and successful actions of the Defense Army of Artsakh, they have continued to fail. In the last few days, Azerbaijan has been concentrating its military attacks by shelling Stepanakert, the capital of Artsakh, targeting civilian structures. As a result of the missile attacks launched by the Azerbaijani armed forces, there are casualties among the civilian population in the cities of Stepanakert and Shushi. We are looking at exclusive footage now. <laughs> Through several failed military attempts, Azerbaijan has now turned its aggression on to peaceful civilians, as well as their flip narrative propaganda tactic against Armenians to the international community. For example, Azerbaijan has claimed that they have taken over the Mataris region. However, Per the representative of the Ministry of Defense of Armenia, Artsun Hovanisyan, there is evidence in the form of video footage which demonstrates how, in fact, the Azeri forces are fleeing the Mataris region as a result of successful implementation of military tasks by Armenian forces. Azerbaijan has continued to deny Turkey's involvement in the war, stating that Turkey has not supplied the country with troops and military aid. Armenia, however, has been actively and consistently able to provide proof of the contrary, which includes photos of soldiers with uniforms displaying the Turkish flag and in some instances the Turkish and Azeri flags together. These photos were published by Azerbaijani President Aliyev's top advisor, Hikmet Hajiev, which he later immediately deleted. However, Armenian task force was able to capture these photos before their deletion. Hajiev has reneged and stated that those were not, in fact, Turkish troops. And that begs the question, if they were not Turkish troops, then why delete the photos and why post such specific photos in the first place? The human rights ombudsman of Artsakh, Artak Beglarian, delivered a call upon the international community, bringing to light the war crimes being perpetrated by Azerbaijani forces against the Artsakh civilian population. Let's take a look at the footage. I'm Artak Beglarian, the Human Rights Ombudsman of the Republic of Artsakh. I repeatedly called upon the international community uh, attracting attention on the war crimes perpetrated by the Azerbaijani armed forces on the recent days. Azerbaijani armed forces started uh, targeting in intentionally civilian objects and population as a result of which we have already tens of casualties and much more wounded. Just today, Azerbaijan started heavily attacking the capital city, Stepanakert, targeting vital civilian infrastructures and civilian buildings with heavy missiles and aviation bombs, including with uh, cluster bombs and cluster missiles, as a result of which we have civilian many uh, casualties. We have now humanitarian disaster in Artsakh, and my call upon the international community is to react properly, 
to stop talking and start acting. Don't be blind. The Armenian government has called upon the European Court of Human Rights, ECHR, requesting to apply an interim measure against Turkey. It states, in particular, taking into account Turkey's multifaceted support of the attacks of Azerbaijan on the civilian population and facilities of the Republic of Artsakh and the Republic of Armenia, which are accompanied by gross violations of international humanitarian law and the European Convention on Human Rights, as well as given Turkey's constant participation in the military operations, Armenia, on its own behalf and on behalf of the Republic of Artsakh, has submitted a request to apply an interim interim measure envisaged by Rule 39 of its Rules of Court against Turkey. The situation in Nagorno-Karabakh concerns not only Armenia, but the entire South Caucasus region, and even the whole world. Former President of France, Francois Hollande, said during a rally organized in support of Artsakh in the community of Alfortville. The former president stated, for years, incidents have taken place in the line of contact, which resulted in numerous casualties. But today, we are not at the conflict of the line of contact, but a more serious incident. We are before war. Yes, a real war which has started by Azerbaijan, but has continued with Turkey's support. Turkey, which in addition to weapons, is also sending Syrian and Libyan mercenaries to Azerbaijan. Today, the situation has further escalated as the civilian population has been targeted. This is not an escalation only. This is destabilization of the entire caucus. Foreign Minister of Armenia Zorab Manatsakanyan and his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov held a telephone conversation. The sides focused on finding ways for solving the situation in Nagorno-Karabakh conflict zone. The Russian side expressed concerns over the increasing number of civilian casualties. The readiness to return the settlement of the conflict to the political diplomatic field under the auspices of the OSCE Minsk Group co-chairs reaffirmed the joint statements of the presidents of Russia, the United States and France. Foreign Minister of Armenia Zorab Manatsakanyan had a phone conversation on October 3rd with the High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy of the European Union, Josep Borrell. Minister Manatsakanyan provided Mr. Borrell the latest developments in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict zone, presenting multiple cases of deliberate targeting of civilians and civilian infrastructures of Artsakh by Azerbaijan, with the use of various caliber weapons resulting in casualties and damages. The Armenian foreign minister expresses deep concern over Turkey's direct engagement with the Azerbaijani aggression, including the deployment of foreign terrorist fighters or mercenaries in Azerbaijan, which according to him can undermine the regional security and lead to a large-scale war. As Armenians continue to rally all over the world, hundreds of Armenians in Los Angeles gathered in front of the CNN news building and for over 34 hours now, over 35 hours, demand full coverage of the war in Artsakh. Armenians have blocked more than 17 intersections on Sunset Boulevard, one of the main streets in Hollywood. The peaceful protesters stated that they will stay as long as needed to attract the attention of CNN and other news outlets in the U.S. Several media outlets have already begun covering this war as a result. On that note, a few hours ago, CNN published a report stating leaders spar over missile attack claims in Armenia and Azerbaijan conflict. CNN further stated that indiscriminate missile attacks are launched against Ganja, Fuzuli, Tartar and Jabrail cities of Azerbaijan from the territory of Armenia. Ganja is the second biggest city of Azerbaijan with an over 500,000 population. Hikmet Hajiyev, a top foreign policy aide to Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev, tweeted, This is disinformation provided by the Azeris, who continue to push their agenda and propaganda, vilifying the Armenians and providing the American public with false information. At this time, we will be joined by a very special guest in our studio via Zoom. We have on the line Mr. Anthony Portantino, member of the California State Senate from the 25th District since 2016. Hello, Mr. Portantino. How are you? Uh, this is uh, 
horrible times to to be uh, together, but important times to be together. So thank you. Yes, and we thank you for always being beside the Armenian people. You have always been by our side. You have been a big supporter, and we really do appreciate your time and being here. We have a few questions for you, talking about what's going on here. Azerbaijan has continued with their false narrative that the aggressors have been the Armenians, as we know. You yourself have visited Artsakh and Armenia on several occasions, correct? And was that your Absolutely. impression of the Armenian and Artsakh people? Well, my impression was it really is a peaceful place. Uh, you know, I love Stepanak and the people going about their lives, trying to live in peace several miles from a hostile front. Uh, it, the spirit of the Artsakh people uh, really moved me and touched me. Why I'm so passionate about uh, putting pressure on the U.S. government to call for peace and the Minsk group to engage. I mean, the international community really has to stop this aggression. Um, and it was clear, I mean, even the Washington Post made a pretty clear statement that uh, the Azeris began this conflict. So, um, you know, we, we have to have peace. Absolutely. And so with that said, and you said that you've been pushing them, and, and of course, we're grateful for that. And what impressions do California lawmakers currently have about Turkey, its aggression, its involvement in hiring jihadist mercenaries, essentially terrorists, uh, to participate in this war, as well as fueling it with military aid and propaganda? What do California lawmakers think about that right now? I mean, you've seen a number of California legislators, congressional representatives, local politicians calling for peace, calling for the international community to engage, condemning the unprovoked attacks. You know, California uh, largely has spoken with a very significant voice. The California Legislative Armenian Caucus sent a strong letter. The Senate Select Committee uh, is sending a strong letter. Uh, legislative leaders and congressional leaders have been condemning this action. And it, and it's important for us as the, the largest state in the U.S. to to call out the Trump administration for its sort of silence and and lack of engagement and, and frankly, cozying up to Erdogan so much, you know, enabling this type of aggression. And the letter that I sent um, said we really have to nip this in the bud to not condemn these early aggressive actions is just going to lead to more uh, loss of innocent life and that that innocent but the the civilian casualties unfortunately are going to are going to affect everybody and so uh, it's important that we speak up uh, collectively and we we articulate the call for peace we can you know the US can withhold aid from Azerbaijan to force them to the peace talks and uh, there's lots of arrows in our quiver that we can fire and hopefully California calling on Washington to do better and be stronger and, you know, be an arbiter of peace uh, will make a difference. Yes, and we have, um, on multiple occasions, we have been calling it an aggression, and it's true, they have been the aggressors. Uh, with that said, I mean, isn't attacking civilians and civilian in infrastructure, in essence, a war crime? And it's done front and center, right on the international stage, by Azerbaijan and Turkey in present day. This is 2020, done right in front of our eyes. And uh, I know that we are condemning it and we are speaking up, but perhaps there's not enough of that speaking up. And furthermore, maybe not enough action. So what in terms of action can we take? What forms other than writing and sending letters to all of our representatives, our respective representatives in our countries and states, what more can be done? Well, I think I think Americans can demand a better foreign policy out of its leaders. I think that's the key. You know, we we have uh, an infrastructure in place to hold countries accountable. We have the power of the purse. Yes, we have to condemn this action. It was wrong, mm -hmm. and loss of civilian life is wrong. Um, and we have to speak with a strong voice and say this needs to be condemned. But we have to use the economic power that the U.S. has to force people to the to the peace uh, table, and we have to rely on the Minsk uh, focus to to instill that peace. And so that's why you know you're seeing hundreds and thousands of of Californians, Armenians in the diaspora. And I think if you listen to the words of uh, Zade Sanani and the High Commissioner today, the diaspora community has a voice in this. Uh, situation and the California diaspora and Armenian community is strongly speaking out, wanting, demanding accurate reporting, demanding action, 
calling for peace, putting on uh, you know pressure on Washington. That's got to be bipartisan pressure to make sure that the Trump administration uh, stops cozying up to Erdogan and starts injecting itself into the peace process and using all means necessary economically to force that to happen. So, you know, I, I, my heart breaks for the people of Stepanakirk. Uh, uh, you know, uh, my three visits there were magical. And, you know, every family and the children that I saw and the families that I engage with should not have this threat of violence um, and be under attack. And Stepanakirk was attacked and the, the drones that uh, uh, the Armenian government has said have flown into Yerevan. I mean, the, you can see the escalation of this on the horizon. And that's why I'm speaking out. And that's why it's important that we, we all speak out against this so it doesn't escalate and we truly get a lasting peace. And this region, as everyone knows, is ethnically Armenian um, and it should stay that way. Thank you for that, Mr. Portentino, absolutely. And as you mentioned, and this is uh, stronger within your realm, uh, with California being the fifth largest economy in the world and having the formalized and official cooperative effort of Armenia and Artsakh, the Armenian Artsakh Mutual Trade, Art and Cultural Exchange in place. What can Governor Newsom, do you feel, do himself or California do with this, uh, other than just condemning it you know, condemning all this aggression, what further can we do? I know that there's pressure, you know, on the White House right now to do something, but what more can we do? What would you like well, to I see from that, your fellow constituents? I think that's the most important thing we can do. I mean, my constituents, obviously, I represent a large and vibrant Armenian community, and they're, they're in the streets, they're protesting, they're demanding accurate reporting, uh, they're leading the way. Mm -hmm of these issues in California. But that's the power of California. If we speak with a united voice, thus far the, the, the correspondence that has come out of the legislature has been bipartisan, which is really important uh, to speak with a collective voice to Washington. And, you know, California as one state has a big voice, but it needs allies within the U.S. to also, you know, spread the word to other states, New Jersey, New York, uh, Massachusetts, other states with large diasporan populations need to work in concert to put pressure on Washington. Ada, I mean, fundamentally, you know, everybody dismissed the early cozying up to Erdogan, you know, when the when President Trump was elected. But that has, in my opinion, helped lead to where we're at today. Um, and that has to stop in and of itself. Um, we have to embrace democracy. And yes, California has partnered with uh, Armenia and Artsakh and will continue to and uh, there's going to be fruitful economic exchange and you know I'm blessed to be at the forefront of that and we have to just continue to show the world that California recognizes Artsakh sovereignty and recognizes the importance of an economic partnership with with Yerevan and has a vibrant diaspora community that demands that we do that and and I think we're acting appropriately. Together, if we can build the, this spirit from California into the other states, uh, maybe we can pressure Washington to do something. I mean, it's uh, 30 days from an election, and I think people should demand from the White House that it shows its cards before November 3rd on how it's going to deal with the attacks on Stepanakert. And yes, with saying that, I think that's definitely going to sway the Armenian vote as well. And as you mentioned, bipartisan support right now is very crucial to this, to gaining some sort of uh, solution, really, and action taken. And uh, yes, with uh, currently our our two nominees running for presidency, mm -hmm. this this is a very critical and crucial time. Uh, so we do appreciate that you are on the on the front lines for us, Mr. Portentino. We appreciate your continued support and you making you know your fellow lawmakers up in California aware and we are very very glad that you're with us and appreciate your time we wish you well and health and uh, of course keep us posted if there are any updates and uh, we are now going to going be going back to the city of Glendale where the Armenians continue rallying on Artsakh Street where the Armenian uh, uh, population continues to rally. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you if there's anything else that you'd like to add, Mr. Portentino. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Artsakh Street because it is <laughs> my office actually faces Artsakh Street and we're proud to have uh, Artsakh Street in Glendale and in my district. And as I said, a proud diaspora community that is really doing a lot to stimulate this, this political pressure. So thank you to everybody on Artsakh Street.
Well, we appreciate you and your time. Thank you again. And now we join Svetlana Bosloyan live in Glendale. Svetlana, are you on the line? What's going on? What's happening in Glendale on Artsakh Street? Որքանը <laughs> Svetlana, thank you, Svetlana. As Svetlana continues to urge, and, and as you can see, she is out there and with our Armenians rallying in Glendale. And I do want to remind everybody that this is a very important and crucial, very critical time for Armenia. Donation is not so much of an option, but it's a duty right now for you to call or, or go on the website armeniafund.org and make your donations to help support Armenia in its war with Azerbaijan. John. And uh, again, the website is armeniafund.org. We will continue to provide you with live Facebook coverage on Horizon TV's Facebook page, so stay tuned. And this was the Horizon Television Armenian English News segment. I'm Tata Vika Kizian. Be well. <laughs> Kina khpersuyer